Hello, I am Dr. Rashid Ahmed from the Department of Physics of Kohat University of Science and Technology. In the subject of quantum mechanics 1 with the course code PHY212, we are at the lecture number 12 and the topic is observables and operators. In quantum mechanics, to some of the measurable quantities that is called observables, we assign operators. An operator is a mathematical operation which sometimes acts on a function producing an equation. In quantum mechanics, such an equation is called the eigenvalue equation. Its general form is given as follows, where the first term is actually an operator. You can see a hat symbol on, on this uh, operator just to differentiate between its normal quantity and an operator. And this operator actually comes from the corresponding observable, for example, linear momentum, energy, angular momentum or number of particles. In this list, please note that there is no mention of mass or time. The reason is that we do not quantize all kind of observables. If we quantize them, for example, if we quantize time, it will produce some weird kind of results which will not match with the our daily life observation about physical systems. But when we have an operator, it must have a corresponding observable quantities. For example, we can ho have operator for linear momentum, then in place of A, we will have symbol for it for linear momentum and so as for energy or angular momentum or number of particles. Now, once we have an operator, it has to act on some kind of function. In quantum mechanics, this function is called wave function. The reason is that the in quantum mechanics, we have a wave nature associated with particles. That is uh, some, some quantum systems. These are quantum systems which have uh, a wave nature associated with them. In this equation, this wave uh, function is actually a special type of function which is reproduced after this operator acting on it and we gov get the function again on the right side of this equation. Such an, e such an function is called eigenfunction and when this operator acts on this eigenfunction producing it again, it has some extra information over here which we call an eigenvalue and that is why this equation is called eigenvalue equation. And all the information about the system taking some physical values of this observable is this eigenvalue. For example, for linear momentum, we will have here a linear momentum operator and a wave function which uh, certainly has some information about linear momentum. And when it acts on this uh, function, it will here give us the set of values which we call eigenvalues which this system or a particle can have. Uh, linear momentum values and this this is again multiplied by a uh, function coming again. Okay, So, this is the eigenvalue equation which is very basic to the quantum mechanics and this is an operator equation as you can see here that this is uh, an operator on the left side of equation. That is why quantum mechanics sometimes called an operator mechanics because operators are coming everywhere in the equations. Now, in order to emphasize that these operators are actually some kind of mathematical uh, entities, uh, I want to give you examples of some mathematical operators and some of them might be useful in physics, but not all of them. For example, uh, a differential operator which is quite useful in physics is just the derivative of some kind of function and this is a derivative which will be used in constructing the uh, energy and linear momentum operators. And then we can have identity operator since operator is defined by its action on a function. Now this identity operator when acting on this function is producing just uh, quantity 1 over here or number 1 over here. So that is why it is called also identity operator. And it is also so, uh, sometimes useful in quantum mechanics. But another function is inhalation operator over here you see as I said uh, uh, operator is defined by its action here you see that this action, this operator B, so called B is inhalating the wave function that is why we call it an inhalation operator and producing null results on the right side. And then in order to emphasize the mathematical nature of these operators, uh, we can have an operator C for example, which when act on a wave function or, uh, or a, a journal function, uh, it multiplies it with the number 3. If we need such an operator, uh, we can construct it 
and we can call it a, some something like a multiplication operator by three. But uh, uh, in quantum mechanics, we do not need such specific operators. Uh, rather, we need some general operators for uh, making equations, uh, uh, which equations uh, produces the eigenvalues. And then another e similar example. Okay, this was about the mathematical nature of uh, operators. And now we go to towards uh, constructing some physical operators. And first of them is a momentum operator. The momentum operator or the linear momentum operator we can uh, certainly have we have in quantum me mechanics the angular momentum operator but here we are talking about the linear momentum operator we uh, construct it by the uh, uh, ih bar del here i would like to explain a bit that why uh, this uh, linear momentum operator is minus ih bar del and what these quantities means as you know in momentum we need to translate our particle uh, from one point uh, to another point for example like here going from uh, this point to another point in order to construct this translation we need to have derivative that's why you uh, uh, you see this uh, nebula symbol over here or del symbol over here okay so this is uh, generating translations so what's then doing h bar over here h bar is actually is for dimensional correction because the uh, dimensions of h bar is of uh, angular momentum and since on the left side we have a linear momentum so with the angular momentum when when we have del by del x which is the inverse of the uh, the position or length then the overall quantity is actually of dimension of linear momentum that's why we have h bar and it also is uh, making it quantum mechanical and i is making is complex because this operator this is an operator nature and minus uh, is some uh, suitable um, uh, sign which at the end will produce to us uh, values uh, which are acceptable to us or which are Hermitian. We will come to this Hermitian operator later but just to mention that making it Hermitian. So this is a operator which you see from re physical reasoning we have constructed out of mathematical operations a physical operator corresponding to observable linear momentum. And if we talk about one dimension, sometimes for uh, uh, simplicity, we talk about only one dimension, let's say call it x dimension, then this operator obviously uh, reduced to it. Extension to the other dimensions, for example, y and z, or to three dimensions at once is quite straightforward. Therefore, we will be always uh, working with uh, linear momentum operator or linear in one dimension. We will be acting uh, in one dimension and uh, to three dimension the extensions are quite straightforward okay so once we have the operator defined for linear momentum we would like to construct an equation for it the eigenvalue equation for it and this eigenvalue equation is certainly will be coming from this uh, operator acting on the eigenfunction and then producing us to these eigenvalues of linear momentum so these are those values which uh, a quantum mechanical system can have for example a single particle quantum mechanical system could be electron so electron can have uh, these uh, linear momentum values uh, so one of them will be possible not all of them so it is quantized so linear momentum is quantized in this way the other thing is to find the probability because quantum mechanics is probabilistic to find the probability of finding a particle with this linear momentum for this you can see in this interval x plus dx we will uh, uh, define the probability and the probability is the phi mod square dx so this means that what is the probability uh, of finding a particle with this linear momentum in the interval x plus dx so at the end we will be measuring these probabilities because these are real values okay next we move towards an example and give you the uh, example of free particle this is very simple and uh, will illustrate uh, the uh, the working of this quantum mechanics theory uh, so let's start with a free particle so free particle is a particle which is not acted by either any kind of force or all the forces are balanced in uh, in quantum mechanics we usually use for these particles the solutions uh, which are plane waves here you see that phi is a a is a normalization factor to be defined later and then this px x by h bar is in the exponential now you see if i put back this phi into here here you uh, i will get uh, the function again and uh, the values for px because this derivative will act over uh, or uh, this px uh, and giving me p uh, this x and giving me the px value 
this can be written in more convenient way like uh, e uh, raised to power iota kx and uh, here I have used this relation to uh, reduce this uh, exponential factor to k. In quantum mechanics actually we usually work with wave vectors this k is a wave vector rather than uh, momentum values so it's uh, more convenient to work with uh, wave vectors. Okay, so this is the case of free particle where no forces are acting and this is the solution of uh, this momentum operator uh, eigen equation, eigenvalue equation. Okay, now uh, moving further uh, I would like to connect uh, this uh, eigenvalue equation with a de Broglie wavelength and uh, to tell you that how uh, de Broglie wa wavelength, de Broglie wavelength will be reproduced from this momentum equation. Since uh, the wave function we used is a periodic one and has some period lambda, but this can be uh, determined via uh, this equation because uh, this is periodic and reproducing itself after uh, period lambda. So, we can equate it and if you do simple mathematics, we get this that uh, 1 is equal to cos k lambda iota sin k lambda. This equation can only be true if cos k lambda is equal to 1 and sin k lambda is equal to 0 and combining them uh, we get the non-vanishing solution only if p is equal to h by lambda which is actually the de Broglie equation and we see that p is inversely proportional to lambda. So, this is de Broglie wavelength and you have seen that uh, if we use the periodic uh, functions, wave functions. Uh, we uh, get the wave nature in the quantum mechanical systems. Okay. Now, we move towards another uh, famous and important operator which is called the energy operator and this energy operator we will be constructing it from Hamiltonian. As you know that Hamiltonian is the sum of H is the sum of kinetic energy plus potential energy. So, we will use for kinetic energy uh, this operator p square by 2 m and for potential energy v for the potential v and as you know that this p we have already constructed out of the differential operator p is equal to i a minus i h bar del. So, this total Hamiltonian will be of this shape. So, this is the energy operator. So, uh, eigenvalue of this h will always be total energy. So, if we move towards uh, the eigenvalue equation for this uh, h hat or the energy uh, operator, uh, we will get this equation which is very famous equation called Schrodinger equation, time independent Schrodinger equation because do not see time here and when this h operator uh, acts on the wave function, it produces the eigenvalue of total energy and the uh, eigenfunction coming back. As I said that this is the time independent Schrodinger equation, a very famous equation uh, in quantum mechanics. It is of the same importance as uh, Newton's second law in the classical or Newtonian mechanics. Okay. Now, again let us go to the example and take the example of free particle where no particles are acting. So, you can imagine that in this case we will put potential equal to 0 because there is there are no forces so the potential is 0 and we will get h is equal to only for the kinetic part. And then if this kinetic part if you put back the values of p uh, this will be in this form uh, when acting on the wave function eigen function will produce eigen function with e as the uh, eigenvalues for the energy. We can write it in terms of a vector as we done previously and we will get k square is equal to 2 m e by h bar square. You can do this simple uh, calculation from this equation. And then uh, in the case of free particle this uh, equation this eigen uh, eigenvalue equation is del square phi plus k square phi is equal to 0 and its solution here is a little bit more complicated than uh, from the uh, momentum operator case because here we constructed the most general solution where we have uh, a plus i k x part and minus i k x part because we have del square. So, we have we can include both of them uh, because when del acting first time uh, turning one into another and then acting another time and will uh, this will become an eigen function for it. But uh, you can see over here that a and b are the constants which has to be which are to be determined and the energy eigenvalue is then e is equal to h bar square k square by 2 m as we have previously determined. So, this is the eigen function of uh, this operator when we put it over here we will get back uh, this uh, 
uh, this uh, this equation because this is solution to it determining a and b and giving us the energy uh, eigenvalues so you see in this way uh, i sh i shown you the examples of two very famous operators the momentum linear momentum operator and energy momentum operator and similar way we can construct the equations eigenvalue equations and uh, definitions of uh, angular momentum or number particles or any other physical quantity which we would like uh, to quantize with this i thank you all